Hey everybody, Casmo here, and today we're back in the H64D. I wanted to make a quick video, hopefully it's quick, uh, just talking about the trimmer, but I do want to direct you over to Red Kite. He did a fantastic job uh, with his trimmer video, so much to the point that I really don't even want to do one, but there are some things that I just want to address in general, uh, but he did a great uh, video on that. You should go check it out. I've got it linked in my uh, community pages on YouTube, and he did a great job of just kind of explaining how the system works and... Uh, and just the intricacies of that mag break. And of course, having that old bit of kit definitely helps uh, quite a bit. So go, yeah, check him out and uh, check out that video. Stingray is town six, you're cleared to engage. Lead is a rolling in, engaging south to north, left in, right out. All right, but I do want to talk a little bit about the trimmer and some things I've learned. Uh, there are some special settings, of course, that you can use. You've got that central uh, trimmer position and then the uh, the default. I've learned that that central trimmer position uh, is basically the devil on a recent stream. Looking around with it now. We're going to die. We're going to die. Oh. You, got this. you got it, man. Hold it. Oh, oh shit. Oh, oh Jesus. Wow. Here we go. Yeah. What's happening? There's oh, dear God. <laughs> So I've gone to that uh, force feedback uh, ready uh, type setting and I've had a little bit more success with that. Now in a real aircraft, of course, just like Red Kite talked about, uh, you've got this magnetic brake that's going to hold these trims in place. And for those of you who are uh, fixed wing nerds, basically what we're talking about is the trim that you're used to in an aircraft, generally speaking, is something on the control surface themselves. We're not controlling anything on the control surface except the actual control surface. Uh, but if you think of it as, uh, you know, like in a, a fixed wing aircraft, uh, if you trim out the uh, elevator, there's actually a little uh, portion that's going to pop out, kind of like a little flap. And uh, it's just to relieve that pressure that you've got to maintain on the controls uh, to keep that control surface where you want it. But we don't have that option with the uh, rotor. We do have little trim tabs that are on the rotor themselves, but the maintenance personnel mess with that. And that has to do with the, the track and balance of the aircraft and the, uh, the rotors in the uh, plane of the of the mast as it spins around, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we're just going to talk a little bit about the techniques that I use uh, with the trimmer. So what we'll do first is just pick it up to a hover, and I'm going to bring up my uh, controls there so you can see. And I have not actually set the trimmer at all. In fact, I don't know why it's set the way it is, but I'm going to reset it there in the center. And I'm just going to get the aircraft light on the wheels. So I'm going to bring in just a little bit of torque. And what I'm trying to do is I just want to see what the aircraft's going to do. All right, so just get a little bit light. You notice I'm putting in some left pedal because I'm increasing the collective. I'm increasing torque. And I'm just getting it light because I want to see how it reacts. A little bit more. A little bit more. And it's just coming straight up. All right, so I had the collective or the cyclic in a good position. And the aircraft just kind of popped straight up. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to be staring at that symbology right there. You're going to be worried about it. Again, it's daytime. Just just hover the aircraft. Use that as a reference, but it's not the only reference. Right now, I'm just kind of staring at it, but uh, I, I kind of have some practice. So, uh, But light pressures. All right, very light pressures. Barely touching the cyclic. In fact, right now, I have two fingers on the cyclic, and I'm just using a little bit of pressure with my hand to keep it in place. And the collective, I've not moved at all. But more importantly, I haven't moved the trimmer. I haven't touched the trim at all. I'm just fighting whatever trim I have set. And I don't recommend putting in trim while you're hovering because if you look up at our control indicators, you can see the pedal there is way off to the left. If I hit the trimmer right now, we're going to go for a ride. So we don't want that. So instead, what I'm suggesting is you fight the trim with whatever you have it set once you get it up to a hover. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to increase collective gently. I'm going to let the nose fall forward and we're going to start to accelerate into forward flight. And what I want you to do is pay attention once we get going, I want you to pay attention to my pedal inputs up there. All right, so we're going to increase the power. And once I get saturation, I'm going to move to transition mode on my symbology select switch, clicking it up once. All right, see very little cyclic input. Just let the aircraft kind of fall into the right attitude. We're increasing our airspeed. I'm not pulling the guts out of it with the collective. Just letting the aircraft fly. But you'll notice my pedal inputs. It's taking less and less of my left foot to keep us 
where I want to be. And I've got a little bit of nose to tail trim just because I'm low, but you'll notice less and less the faster I get. And that's because when the forward flight, we're going to get the, uh, the tail rotor is going to get offloaded. So the amount of thrust that's required to, to offset the torque is going to decrease because the aerodynamic effects of the aircraft and the vertical fin and all that stuff. All right, but you can notice now that our cyclic is way far forward of our trim. So if we hit the trimmer now, we're probably going to run into some problems. So what I've been trying to do is basically get everything relatively close to where it's already trimmed. You can see we're still maintaining our airspeed for the most part. I'll pull that cyclic back just a little bit and I'm going to hit the trimmer. You can see we got a little bit of nose tuck and that's because we waited to click the trimmer until we had our cyclic way far forward and it's a it's a massive change but you'll also notice we didn't do any crazy uh, yawing left or right that's because the pedal was pretty much where it was trimmed out for before so there's no reaction so what i'm going to do is i'm going to recage i'm going to start back over at a hover and we're going to trim it out as we move forward and we're going to try to find that sweet spot of where we can trim it without giving us a whoa boy on the yaw, but also not having to tuck the nose. All right, so we're back in the aircraft out of hover. And again, I want you to just take a look at that trimmer uh, set position. That X is right there in the center for my cyclic. And you can see the pedals, we've got it centered, but I've got quite a bit of pedal input. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna do the same thing as before. I'm gonna increase the collective. I'm gonna let the nose fall forward. I'm gonna start uh, moving into forward airspeed. But as I go, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find that good sweet spot where my cyclic isn't too far forward, my pedals aren't too crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a little click of the trim and we're gonna see what happens. All right, so let that nose fall forward to transition mode. All right, you can notice my cyclic is still pretty much where it was. I'm gonna start light letting that uh, pedal come in or offloading. I don't need a lot of cyclic. All right, I think we're pretty close. My cyclic has barely moved. I'm gonna click the trimmer. We got a little bit of yaw, but you can tell why, because I had a little bit of left pedal in. All right, I'm gonna click it again. I'm gonna click it again. Right now, I'm completely hands off. My hands are up in the air. We got a little bit of a climb just because we had some momentum in that way. I'm gonna put my hands back down just gently, just ever so gently touching the collective. I've not even retrimmed it. It really has more to do with the fact that I've got a, uh, a, a uh, gunfighter and it's metal and it's really heavy. Or uh, I said collective, but I meant cyclic. So my cyclic really just the, the weight of my joystick is what's causing that rise. But right now it's trimmed out. Okay. So I'm going to climb back up. And now what we're going to do is decelerate. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start clicking it gently and, and, and every so often as we descend, we're going to try to keep that trim caught up with our controls. So I'm going to start bringing my collective down and I, I can tell, I can look up at the thing obviously, but I can just tell from my own, you know, movement that I've moved the cyclic a, a little bit from where I was uh, before. So I'm going to click it again and trim it. And again, that nose is going to pop up just because of that. And I'm just going to keep doing it. So click, click. click. All right, we're just going to try to land or, or come to a hover down here. And, but at some point I'm going to have to stop clicking. So I'm going to click it again. And I'm just putting that flight path vector on my intended touchdown point or near it. Click again. Click again. And we'll probably click once, maybe twice more. I'm starting to put in some left pedal now. So I got a lot of power in the uh, in the rotor. So I'm gonna click it one more time. And I got that little bit of yaw, so I'm gonna hold off on clicking it anymore. I'm gonna let that trim hold me steady. And I'm just gonna fight that trim and put in whatever inputs I need to. Back to hover mode. And we are at a stabilized hover. And we can look up at our trim. We've got a little bit of left pedal trimmed but you can see that I've got a lot more applied. The cyclic is pretty much in the center position. So once again, bring in a little bit of power, Radar. let the nose fall. 
Transition mode. Cyclic is still roughly where it's trimmed. Pedals are pretty close. I'm going to go ahead and anticipate a yaw, but I'm going to trim it. And there it is. And I put a little bit of right pedal in right as I trimmed because I knew that the aircraft was going to want to tuck off to the left. And I'm just going to trim it again. So you can see if you make these little trims as you go, you're not fighting the, uh, the result. And I'm going to trim it one more time. Actually, I'm going to get that flight path vector just up to the horizon. Nice and stable. Trim it. And there we go. Hands are off the controls. Now, one of the things the Apache does have is an attitude and altitude hold modes. However, these are not uh, fully fleshed out. In fact, the altitude mode is not in at all. And the attitude mode uh, is in, but it doesn't seem to be working uh, completely. Or I, I know it's not working completely the way that it should. So we'll talk more about that in the future. Uh, but if you look at your trimmer switch, this, this uh, five position switch on your cyclic, uh, of course, we've got our force trim release or force trim interrupt is the up. If we go left, you can see that we've got a box around our airspeed and we've got an attitude hold mode and it does kind of work in forward flight. We've got a little bit of a turn. So right now it's going to hold this attitude for me and it has some level of authority. I can't remember the percentage. It really doesn't matter. It's got some level of authority over your controls and it's going to do what it can to keep the aircraft at the attitude that you turned it on. And then of course we have altitude hold, uh, which is not implemented. If I go right on the switch, uh, we would get that box around the altitude, which would help us a lot because we've got this attitude set, but you can see that we're climbing. And once again, if we turn on the altitude hold mode, it would hold us at that altitude and it has some level of control over our collective inputs. Uh, if we wanted to turn those off individually, we would just select them again. So I'm going to go left and I turn off my attitude hold. I would go right, turn off my altitude hold, or I could hit down on that trimmer switch and it would turn both modes off. Uh, and this can be valuable in case of an emergency. Uh, say you're at a hover and you lose an engine, you can quickly kick off those hold modes and be able to respond to the emergency. So anyway, uh, again, uh, please go take a look at Red Kite's video. It's fantastic. He's got an old piece of kit that makes uh, this stuff a lot easier to understand uh, if you're having trouble understanding how force trim works in helicopters. Uh, but for my money, that uh, central trimmer position is is not good. <laughs> it's not the way that, uh, uh, that I would recommend you do it. Uh, try this uh, FFB mode and then just make little clicks as you go and just understand that trim position is going to change uh, and so just anticipate that change but also if you do it gradual over time it's not as uh, dramatic as it, as it can be uh, so hopefully this video was a little bit helpful and again check out red kite we'll talk to you guys later take it easy